What's going on, friends? Mike McFarland sitting in the studio. Kind of peaceful afternoon. It's so strange uh, living in Northeast Texas. Uh, I think I've mentioned it before, but we had a cold spell that almost a week worth of thing near feel like Mother Nature was trying to kill us. And then she turns around and, and gives us 60, 70 degree days with humidity and winds from the south. And it's, it smells different. So you got, we live in a very unique place here at Lake Fork and the whole Northeast Texas area, the corner. We, we can have Antarctic air come all the way down from Alaska, Canada. And we can have subtropical air come out of the Gulf. Mexico, etc. Um, we get both climates. It's really unique. Um, I have been here 10 years now and I have seen a winter where the lowest temperature we reached was 36 degrees and that was in the middle of the night at 3 a.m. for only one hour. And that was the lowest that it reached the whole winter. The fish were spawning and on beds in mid-January and I think I've mentioned this before. I think it was 2016. Lee say was was out fishing for a bed fish, an eight pound fish that he saw on a bed, January 8th. Um, I remember it very distinctly. At that time I was sponsored and uh, pro staff with Lake Fork Tackle Lures, Mr. Ronnie Parker, rest in peace. And he had asked me to work in the back room, making plastics, kind of stocking up for spring. And he had asked me to commit for you know two months to be able to, if I was gonna work in there. And, and it's a good time for me to, to go work hourly for, for that. And, uh, but I remember being disappointed that I was locked up in the, in the back pouring plastic baits and here, January, February, the fish were spawning. Um, that's the only one year out of the 10, the rest have been pretty cold. And usually the spawn doesn't start until March, mid April, April, May. Um, but, uh, Texas is very unique. I love it here. Um, it's beautiful. What I, my reason for starting this out, I do want you to recognize is this. Okay. The winter solstice, which is the shortest day of the year, was like December 20th, okay? And so each week now, each day really, we grow a little bit longer and it starts real slow. At first we're only growing, you know, 30 seconds, whatever, longer each day of sunlight. But the two things that are happening, number one, we're growing longer. The days are already growing and, and it gets rap more rapid as, as we, we progress here. Um, by the end of the week, you know, we can end up having five to ten minute difference in the sunrise, sunset, etc. But the second thing is the angle of the sun is beginning to change already. And that's what's changing our time. And so I feel personally that a lot of the fish, especially the biggest fish, um, they recognize this. And they recognize it as, as spring to them. It's not spring temperatures. They're not going to act like spring. But they begin their preparation, for example, especially the big fish with eggs. They, they begin to kind of foresee, migrate, if you will. In some cases, they don't have to migrate. Lake Fork, there's very little migration. Um, but they begin to kind of foresee that, hey, the season's turned. And, and what's up and coming in the near future here is, is spring and the spawn. And so the biggest fish that are have eggs are being called on, their bodies being called on demand for food. And so I've noticed whether I'm in Arizona, January, California in January, even though it's still cold for you and I, there's a lot of big fish that will come shallow. Um, they will begin to pursue, to, visit those places and, and, and not stage. I'm not going to call it staging, but they will start looking for, for more protein type foods, crawfish, brim, things like that. Um, and they will, so to speak, begin to pre-stage, visit these pre-stage areas. They cruise around a lot. They roam around a lot. They tend to do that more on warm trending days. And that's why I'm bringing this up. Over the next probably four to six weeks or so, you're going to see a lot of things happen in Northeast Texas, weather-wise. We're going to have a warm trend for two days and a cool trend for three days and a warm trend for one day and a cool trend for five days and a warm trend for five days and a cool trend for two days. I call it the Texas two-step. It's crazy. It's, it's, it's hard on you and I. 
Uh, but the water temperatures are what matter. And so I want you to just keep in perspective how you approach the fishing. When we're on cold trend days, you got to fish slow, you got to fish a little deeper, you got to think a little more lethargic. When we're on warm trending days, that's when you can start thinking more active, look for sun banked areas that are warm trending. But here's the best part is those are the days that, you know, you should expect to have some shallow fish. They're sunbathers. Largemouth bass are sunbathers. They are sunfish. They're from a sunfish family. Um, so that's just a little public information. Nothing's changed since the other day when we talked on Tuesday. Lake levels even stabilized, 39778, 0 to 1 clarity, 47, 49 degrees. Um, very much confirmed yesterday that there absolutely are a lot of big fish staged already, not necessarily staged, but stacking in the mouths of the creeks, the mouth of the coves, the bays, in the trees, suspending in the trees in 20 feet of water approximately. Now the fish themselves aren't necessarily 20, some of them are, but they're suspending in trees that are in 20. Um, so, and, and again, there is a lot of fish at 20 foot. That's where the big ones are. It was so windy, really couldn't spend any time fishing for them to, to, to get a bite out of them. But that's where your, your Alabama rigs, your deep diving crankbaits, um, slow rolling spinner baits, slow rolling small swim baits, they're tough to catch. If you don't have live scope, you're wasting your time just going to fish the mouse where there's so many trees. It's a needle in a haystack. So it's a live scope type situation. Um, as far as the other bite, pardon me real quick. I, I got to blow my nose. The other bite, which is, I have discussed multiple times, and I always will, before live scope, nobody ever knew to go look for these fish that I'm talking to you about suspending in these trees. And so we got in the creeks and we fished the creeks wings. And, and we, we fish jigs generally, some soft plastics, but when the water's really cold, soft plastics don't really work that well. They're not that very lifelike. So a jig, a good jig or a good hair jig is always the way to go. Um, but the, the, the main thing is the creek swing. So everything's kind of the same that I gave you the report on Tuesday. Um, with this warming that we're having the last few days, and it looks like it's going to stay this way for a little bit. We might even have some tropical rain, and, and it looks pretty heavy coming Monday. Um, that doesn't help you if you're fishing this weekend. But um, publicly, public report, I'm trying to give you some information. And you know I want to drive you to the members only. I'm going to share some really cool information with the members in just a minute. But I want to make sure I give you some decent information. I wouldn't go to Florida. Um, like I said, it's cold. The water temperature is really cold. And like I said the other day, Mark Pack used to say, you know, the best place to fish on fork when the water's below 48 degrees is from your couch at home. Um, they just don't catch a lot. They just don't. They're not active. They're a cold-blooded creature. They're, they're a, a, a sunfish family type bass. They're not a cold water species like trout. And, and they're just tough to catch. So other than that, um, there is some good fishing in the area. That's where I'm trying to lead you. Um, some of the smaller lakes tend to recover from the cold faster. So Lake Holbrook, for example, you might run over to Holbrook in the morning, catch you some fish, and then come fish fork in the afternoon. Um, you may run to Lake Athens. Athens has grass. Anytime you have grass, grass acts like a blanket. And, and the, the, the sun especially, if you have any matted grass or any grass really at all, it's, gonna, it's like a blanket. It's going to absorb some of that energy and that sunlight and, and can be warm. Athens is a good place to go. I have a guide trip lined up tomorrow. Um, and probably going to fish on Saturday. So next week I'll have a little more information for you, particularly, um, I'm not going to say where I'm going tomorrow, but I'm going somewhere special. Um, and it has grass and, and winter bass need grass and Lake Fork doesn't have it. So that's my best public advice is go to, go to Bob Sandlin, go to, uh, Gilmer, Lake Gilmer's got a lot of grass. Um, Hey, go to Power Plant Lake. Go to Lake Welsh this weekend. Um, it, it's a New Year's weekend. It'll probably be pretty busy. Parking lot's pretty packed up. But anywhere you can, you know, Lake Martin, Brandy Branch, um, some of those other places are probably a better choice than fishing Lake Fork at this time. Okay? That's it. That's all I got for you guys. Um, apparently, by the way, just some FYI, FYI information. There was an incident on the 154 launch ramp area bridge. Uh, there's a lot of uh, 
rumor and a lot of junk that caught going around that apparently it was some convicts that had broken out of jail, stolen a van, and they dumped the van in the water. They dumped the van and escaped into something else. Um, nobody died. Um, there wasn't a drowning, none of that kind of stuff. At least this is the information that I understand um, as I know it. It still could, there's so much rumor, it still could be even different from what I'm telling you. Um, but if you're wondering what did happen on the 154, that's what I've heard transpired. And, um, and they, I don't believe, have caught the criminals. Maybe they have, maybe they haven't. It's irrelevant. They're probably in Mexico. Um, but guys, I appreciate you. Um, I won't see you until the new year, new year's passed. So next Tuesday, I'll come back with a new rundown. Happy new year to everybody. Please hit the like button. If you, you know, enjoy these public rundowns, um, comment below, make any suggestions. Maybe you have, um, don't forget that I don't want to keep driving you and pushing you too much, but come over to the members only channel. Um, the first, I have two, two more channels available to you. The members only channel is $4 and 99 cents. Okay. And I give, a report that's much more upgraded than this. This time of year, there's not a lot to talk about, but come March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October next year, there's a lot to talk about. And in that members only rundown, I give details. And I promise you that McFarland fishing next spring in March, when I start catching them on these big swim baits, I'm gonna tell you all about it. I'm gonna tell you where, how and exactly how to go catch the same fish that we catch every day as a guide company with our clients. When I start catching these fish on these big glide baits, that's a secret stuff. That's secret magic. I'm going to tell the members only exactly what color, exactly where to, exactly how to set the boat up, and exactly how to fish the bait. Location included to catch the same big fish that my clients will be catching with me while fishing this year. So the members only channel, $4.99 a month, $60 a year. $60 a year, you get eight fishing reports per month, in depth, spill my guts, tell you what's going on on Fork. Man, 60 bucks, that's a, that's a half a tank of in your boat. Come over from the public to the members only. The next channel is called Let's Talk. We call it Let's Talk Fishing. But I pick a topic every week, preferably by the members that have requested it. It could be let's talk boats, let's talk jigs, let's talk creek swings, let's talk reaction, let's talk fishing line, let's talk terminal. And I literally do a one lesson per week. Some of them, the last lesson was 45 minutes in depth and detail. You're going to learn something. That channel is $9.99 a month. So it's an additional $60 a year. Okay, you're now tied up. If you were to become a Let's Talk member, you're now tied up for $120 for the whole entire year. You're going to get the eight rundowns, members only rundowns. You're going to get four lessons a month, and you're going to be put into drawing every month for a winner's package special that's going to have all kinds of baits from my sponsors, from Impact Lures, from Tidelines UV, from Lake Fork Tackle Lures, from Go Fish Lures. Once a month, I'm going to draw a winner from Let's Talk Fishing Only, the upgraded channel, and send that winner a package. I will be including t-shirts, hoodies, and once we get to the 50 member mark, for every 50 members, I'm going to include once a year a shot at winning a fishing trip with me. So for $60 a year, you get members only. For an additional $60, you get to Let's Talk Fishing and, and a chance at a, a win a fishing trip. If there's 100 members, two fishing trips I give away a year. Man, I'm telling you, I'm not trying to solicit you or sell you anything other than come on over to watch my members only channels, the first one, and or the Let's Talk. I'm inviting you now. Please come on over. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Happy New Year.